Intelligence is an interesting concept. It's very controversial. In fact, if you... One of the things that continually happens over and over again in psychology is that psychologists discover all sorts of new kinds of intelligence. And, you know, the biggest two proponents of that sort of thing, I suppose, were Bob Sternberg, who came up with this thing he called practical intelligence, and then Howard Gardner, who came up with the theory of multiple intelligences, which had a very large effect on educational psychology um, when the theory was pr first proposed. And that's not saying much, because generally speaking, it's very difficult to find a discipline that's more susceptible to fads than educational psychology. And as far as I can tell, generally speaking, each fad is worse than the previous one. So, you know, Gardner posited that, uh, I think there were seven, oh, there they are, seven or eight different intelligences, linguistic, musical, logical, mathematical, spatial, body kinesthetic, intrapersonal, and interpersonal. And people talk about emotional intelligence, and they talk about practical intelligence. And as far as I'm concerned, all of that's complete rubbish. And there's technical reasons for that. I mean, there's technical and philosophical reasons for that. The first thing is, you can't just mess up a word. You know, the whole point of having a word is so that it defines some things, it describes some things, and doesn't describe other things, right? And so, you can, you can make the word intelligence account for whatever you want. So you can say that the ability to dance is a form of intelligence. <coughs> but the problem with that is you blur out the word so badly you can't tell what it means anymore. And so, and I would also point out, we had perfectly good words for those major intelligences. We called them talents. And so it's perfectly reasonable to make a distinction between a talent and intelligence. Now, you might say, well, how the hell do you know the difference? Like, if, if things look similar to some degree, then how do you know if they're the same or different? Well, that's exactly what you do when you do the construct validity process. So let's say you rated a number of people on their dancing ability, and then you rated a number of people on their ability to multiply two two-digit two numbers in their head quickly. Well, then, you see, technically, if both of those were intelligences, then the people who could dance better could multiply two-digit numbers faster in their head. And the, they would be slightly <coughs> positively, sorry. <coughs> See, that's what happens when I don't have any Diet Coke. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, if intelligence was the right word to subsume both of those, then what you'd see is there would be a high correlation. The people who were good dancers would also be the ones who could multiply most rapidly. And I mean multiply in their head. Um, <clears throat> but, that, but you're not going to be able to extract out a single factor like that. It's just, not, it's just not the case that those things associate like that. So for something to be one phenomena, <clears throat> The things that it... <coughs> Obviously, I've talked too much this semester. All the things that are subsumed under that definition have to be correlated and highly correlated because otherwise they're not the same thing. It's the definition of the same thing. Now, IQ is a very peculiar construct, a very unique construct from a psychological perspective, but also, <clears throat> more generally, from a social science perspective, because IQ has the most predictive validity of anything ever discovered in the social sciences, period. 